Hi gang, this is called acoustic propulsion, or moving things with sound. These bottles are simply hanging from a thread. Below is a speaker playing a sound at specific frequency, and that's all there is to it. I'll show you how I set it up, along with the smoke test so you can see the air jets. Here's how I set it up. I start with two plastic soda bottles, 710 milliliters each. Not just any shape of container will do. It has to have a large volume called the chamber, as well as a narrower volume called the neck, and a hole at this end of the neck. The first thing to do is find the proper frequency for the sound to play. To find it, I simply blow across the open end of a bottle while recording the sound that's made. This is called a resonant frequency, and it'll be different depending on the shape of the container. I then open the resulting sound file in a program called Audacity. Any sound editing software will do, but I'm demonstrating using Audacity since it's free software that anyone can download and use. I zoom in on this section of the recording, select it, and play it. I zoom in a little more, and you can see it's all one frequency. I select a bunch of waves from peak to peak. There are 18 waves. The time for my selection is 0.104 seconds. 18 waves divided by 0.104 seconds is a frequency of 173 cycles per second, or 173 hertz, a pretty low frequency. That's the resonant frequency for these bottles. More specifically, it's the Hemholtz resonance, and the bottle is a Hemholtz resonator, due to its shape. Next, I select the big chunk of sound where there's just that frequency, and tell it to start and end only where the wave crosses the zero line. I copy it, and then paste it into a new sound file a few times to make a longer lasting sound. Alternatively, since you know the frequency, you can use any method you might have that generates that frequency. Here I have around 30 seconds of it. Now back to the real world. I simply attached the two bottles facing in opposite directions to a stick of some sort. I then hung that using a thread from this lamp, which allows me to easily adjust the location of it all. Below it I've sat a computer speaker facing upwards. Computer speakers often consist of a big box and two smaller speakers. The big box contains a woofer, or a subwoofer, meaning it's specially good at playing low frequency sounds, like 173 Hz. It's also a big speaker. You'd need that to create a large mass of upward moving air, or sound waves. Time to try it out. From Audacity I click on the play button. I turn on the speaker and turn up the volume. The bottles start to move. Here I've created a sound wave with a higher frequency, 200 Hz. As you can see, it barely works, if at all. The same with this lower frequency, 100 Hz. The closer you are to the resonant frequency, the better it works. Now for a smoke test. I first tape the system to keep it from moving, and then I light an incense stick, and put it in the bottle, trying hard not to have it touch inside. Before I turn on the sound, the smoke comes out gently, but when the sound is on, there's a jet of smoke coming out. I don't have any way of seeing it, given the high frequency, but according to the book Notes on Acoustics by Uno Wingard, the jet is actually individual vortex rings, in this case being emitted at 173 rings per second. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more videos like this. That includes one on how to make a speaker using piezoelectric crystals, one about a large Stirling engine I made, along with how it works and demonstrations, and one all about our strange looking electrical wall sockets with their hot neutral and ground holes. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!